ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, welcome. We have a short video, but a very important video. I want you to understand something. The difference between myself and all the other people out there who are claiming to know something about something that they don't know nothing about. I am not here to pat myself on the back. I know, and I'm going to say it because it is the way it is. I know that I'm unique. I know that my way of thinking is completely different than everybody else's. I know that when it comes to legal and logic, that I am above par. Now, I know this because I didn't tell that to myself. In a four-year span, five law firms asking me to join them as a consultant was the point. Their explanation is because I don't think like them, but they like the way I was thinking and how I came up with my arguments. I don't need accolades from anyone else. I know who I am. I know what I'm capable of. I know that I am a terror when it comes to this stuff. I know that I'm good. Not because I go around patting myself on the back. I just know what I know. I'm not good at everything. I'm not great at everything. But when it comes to this stuff right here, I want you to take a look. Let's do this so that you understand. One, two, three, four, five documents I'm working on, all dealing with the mega and micro trust. They're done. I just have to proofread. That's all day tomorrow and all day Monday. Let me let you guys understand something. Do you know having a trust, the mega trust, be the grantor of another trust, the micro trust. There's nothing wrong with that. But then having the beneficiary, you, be the beneficiary of the micro trust, there's nothing wrong with that. Having the micro trust be the trustee for the mega trust, there's nothing wrong with that. But having you be the trustee for the micro trust, whew, man, there's nothing wrong with that. Let me prove it to you. See, this is the reason why nobody else has ever done it before. Well, technically, they have done it in the Cayman Islands. <laughs> That's why you pay so much money for their trust. Because they've done the same thing along the same line, but they have not done it the way I am doing it. Let me explain something. You guys know how in 1933, the government sees all the gold? Okay, they there was a contract. You guys know about the contract, right? Yeah, well, they retained all the gold, held on to the gold, and we got nothing. Yeah, we were supposed to have our junk being uh, recognized, acknowledged, and all that stuff, but it didn't happen. Sorry, uh, I'm a little distracted. Give me one second. I have to check on something. They got dogs, so hold on one second. I apologize. I was talking to Eve. Uh, Griff and Eve, that's the name of the two dogs. Griff is the boy, of course, and Eve is the female. <laughs> I know, I know, but some people, you know, we live in that age where, oh, God, we have Star Trek where a female lead is called Michael. You know what I mean? So I, I got to do that, all right? All right, ladies and gentlemen, let me see if I can break it down to you so you better understand what's going on. The trusts that are set up in the Cayman Islands are set up to hide people's assets. We're not trying to do that. In 1933, the government seized all the gold. Now remember, the takings clause of the Fifth Amendment, no one's property may be taken. No person's property may be taken for public use. Well, when the Treasury seized all the gold, it was identified as a public use seizure. It was to be given to government says it right there in the congressional record, what their intent was. Well, no one's property, go look at the Fifth Amendment, study it, no one's property may be taken for public use without just compensation. It's called the takings clause. Well, what was your compensation? Well, let me throw something at you. That's why you are tax exempt, because you've never been compensated. So you can never make a profit. Shh. Do not tell nobody. Like I said, nobody thinks like I do. 
you can never make a profit since the government owes you for seizing your property. Now remember, the property of your grandparents, your great-grandparents, and your parents, all of those properties are tied up. Those are future earnings that are tied up. You could never prosper because they seized your gold and did not give you the benefits of the seizure. Don't let them tell you that they allow you to co-mingle and, and go about your business. No, those are rights. They, they can't give you a right and call it a privilege. No one can convert a right to a privilege. There's no authority to do so. So non-tax, can't tax the estate. Sorry, the estate is not taxed because it's held in trust. Sorry, government can't tax it. And there is no money. They seized all the gold. So they can't tax it. That's the first thing you need to know. Second, the government has control over your estates. It's called the Age of the Majority Act. Go read it. <laughs> it's in every state. They are in control. That's why. Pay attention. The ultimate ownership of all property is in the state. That's why they have ultimate ownership. Individual so-called ownership is mere user. Read. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why they have the usage tax exemption form in every state. Because you're using the property. So you are exempt from paying taxes on somebody else's property. You have a right to the property. So they can't charge you taxes for something you have a right to. That's why they have the exemption document for every state. It's called usage tax exemption. Go look at Senate document number 43. Do a keyword search for ultimate. And you'll see it says that individual so-called ownership amounts to, i.e., colon, mere user. That's why they have a user's tax exemption or a usage tax exemption. What, you didn't pay attention? They told you in a congressional record, the new money given to the banks will be in return for government obligations, notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers acceptance, and trade acceptances. That's the first time you hear trade acceptance in the entire act is in that statement right there. When you look at, pay attention, 12 U.S.C. 412, you'll see it says acceptances. It says neither bankers or traders acceptance. It says acceptances. So it includes both. That lets you know that was their intent. But we're not finished. It says the money will be worth 100 cents on the dollar because it is backed by the credit of the nation. Now, here's your mere user part. It will represent a mortgage on all of the homes and other property of the people of the nation. Okay, pay attention. They just told you. Ladies and gentlemen, how can you pay taxes on something you have no control over? That's not in your possession. Ah, now we get to the crux of this video. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why the mega trust works and I'm going to point it out so you get it. And I promise you, you'd have to pay some of these attorneys quite a bit of money to find this out. We're going to let ChatGPT explain it. Certainly, I'll provide case citations that support the principle that as long as the grantor, beneficiary, or trustee does not have direct control over the property of the estate, self-dealing and circular ownership conflicts are mitigated. Here are seven case citations relevant to this principle. 1. United States v. Byram, 408 U.S. 125, 1972. In this case, the Supreme Court held that a grantor's retention of voting rights in a, a closely held corporation's stock transferred to a trust did not constitute control over the trust property sufficient to cause inclusion in the grantor's estate. This underscores that separation of control mitigates issues of self-dealing. Number two, Helvering v. Clifford, 309 U.S. 331, 1940. The court held that a trust would be considered the grantor's property for tax purposes if the grantor retained too much control. 
However, the decision also implies that without such control, the trust remains separate from the grantor's estate. Three, uh, Lewis Vering, Commissioner, 176 F2D 646, First Sir, 1949. Uh, this case involved a trust where the grantor retained the power to control trust investments. The court held that such control resulted in inclusion of the trust assets in the grantor's estate. It demonstrates the principle that lack of direct control by the grantor is crucial in avoiding such inclusion. Four, Morse, Morse V's, Morse, 3D27 Mass 2 and 53, 98 NE 2D 284, 1951. This case underscores that the fiduciary's independent control over trust assets is essential for the trust's legitimacy and to avoid conflicts arising from circular ownership and self-dealing. Five, right now. Okay, we're going to stop right there. We're going to take all of these right here. There's no reason for me to provide this to you guys. You just pause the video and copy it and all of that stuff. But I ain't going to go through all that. Because uh, this was only for me just proving to you guys I know what I'm doing. Now you see how it said self-dealings and investments and all of that stuff. And how the grantor could be liable for circular ownership. You know, keeping everything in his control. Well, guess what, y'all? You see how it said that you must have possession of the property? Well, right now, the infant estate... And the securities for the minor account, you have to go after that. You don't have it. If you had it, pay attention. You remain a minor until you gain control of the securities held in your minor account. So you don't have control because it's you don't have access to the account. Ta-da! There is no circular ownership issues. There is no co-mingling. There is no interference. There is no nothing. Because you don't retain the property. But you do retain what's known as the legal and equitable interest in the property. That cannot be taken from you. So let's go ahead and see what, what these laws, if they real. Let's find out what perplexity has to say, because I didn't look it up. Supreme Court's decision in United States versus Byram, 1972, established an important precedent regarding the retention of voting rights and closely held corporation stocks transferred to a trust and its impact on estate tax inclusion. The court held that the grantor's retention of the voting rights did not constitute sufficient control over the trust property to warrant inclusion in the grantor's estate. And here are the key points. Byram decision. Okay, so it was correct. Separation of control mitigates issues of self-dealings in a trust. How does the concept of separation of control mitigate? You don't have control. The government has control. The trustees have control. So in this contract, there are four parties. I know, I know he keeps dropping these little bombs and little, little, little egg, 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 eggs for Easter and all of that stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, there's the trustee. The trustee and the fiduciary are not the same person. They are identified specifically. The fiduciary is the one who has control of trust property, and you are not the fiduciary. Fiduciary is separate. This trust has four parties, a trustee, a grantor, a beneficiary, and a fiduciary. Ta-da! Imagine that. Let me say it again. Imagine that. Like I said, I'm not putting together bubblegum. And I'm giving you the arguments. Now, like, there are going to be people who are going to try to duplicate this, but that's why we have the clause in this trust, because I'm the first one to do it this way. I know that for a fact. Why? Why can I say that for a fact? Because nobody else put the pieces together with the March 9, 1933 Act to be able to put a trust together in this fashion and then give four parties <laughs> and then include all of these other clauses? Lord have mercy. So... That's how you'll invalidate, invalidate your trust when you try to duplicate it. Oh, yeah, and that's why I'm posting it on video, <laughs> documenting what I'm doing. Oh, there's an arbitration clause. Oh, you guys didn't know. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me snap. I'm sorry. I didn't tell you. Hold on a second. I'm about to show it to you. Let me pause y'all for a second, okay? Let you know that I'm not devious. I'm di not diabolical, but I'm not devious. What happens is every last one of the videos, every single video, Pay attention in the description. Pay attention. Every single video has our disclaimer. The link for our 
Oh, hold on. Let me take you to this one. Gifting to the United States. I'm just going to click on it. I just want y'all to see. I don't do anything for any other reason. Come to my videos, and guess what? We have a disclaimer. There's the link. With the arbitration agreement. Ta-da. Oh, that's how I'm about to hit Google across the head. That's been up there for almost a year. Google wants to change its terms and policies and all that. It's too late. I've already given them notice. <laughs> it's on their website. I told you, I, this is what I do. That's why I'm not, I told you, I'm going to take care of Google when the time comes. This uh, agreement, the arbitration clause, it's not intrusive. As long as people are fair and do things fairless, uh, fairly, you know, don't sit up there and try to get over on nobody. Trying to get over. Ah, 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 ah. Super fly. Okay, as long as they don't try to get over, then they ain't got to worry about nothing. See, our, our agreement is fair. It's even-handed. Nobody, we have never, well, we had to do it with three people who worked for SACOM. We had to bring claims against them. And because they tried to take over the company and then tried to steal money from the company. So we had to, we had to, had no choice. They violated the terms of the agreement. But nobody else have we ever, ever, ever done an arbitration clause against We'll talk about the arbitration stuff momentarily uh, in another video where you guys can do your tax credits on the arbitration and you can join the lawsuit regarding the arbitration because the arbitrations are part of the lawsuit. I know, I know, I didn't tell you all of that, but I did incorporate it in there because most of it had to do with mortgages. So they're incorporated. And all of the people who had the courts giving them adverse decisions and tell them they had to pay $500 to file their so-called motion to confirm when it's a summary proceeding disposition matter, which means it's a miscellaneous matter, and the court charging fees, I'm going after the court for charging you fees. You're tax exempt and you must understand that. Well, see, the people who've been trying to explain this for years have not been explaining it correctly. You're tax exempt because they took the money out of the system. They have been saying that to you, but they haven't been explaining why you're tax exempt. Okay, the reason why you're tax exempt is because they are holding your property and they're not paying you interest. They're not paying you any dividends. They're not paying you anything. They cannot tax you while holding your property. That's extortion. Again, the Fifth Amendment, they must compensate you. That's why you're tax exempt. But nobody's explaining that. So here's the thing. The trust is exempt. Why is the trust exempt? Because the trust does not earn a profit, does not make a profit, will never record a profit. But the reason why you all pay taxes is because you volunteer the document that you earn an income. Why do you think somebody's been telling you about how to write off things so that you'll never, ever have to pay taxes again? Yeah, you'll pay them, but you'll pay them through credits. There is no money, people. You'll pay them through credits, federal stupid credits. So... I just wanted to tell you the, and I, I can't tell you everything that goes into this trust because it's too much. This thing is 47 pages long. There are too many things in this trust. Oh, by the way, and putting interrogatories, you better believe interrogatories, interrogations in the embodiment of the trust. Man. So all I can tell you is, Oh, I know, I know people are going to be doing their trust and getting ideas from me. That's okay, because when you do it, I get all the credit, whether you want me to get it or not. That's why I'm doing the videos, people talking about it, so that nobody can say they came up with the idea before me, they did it before me, they had the concept, they figured this out, they figured that out. It's called the Securities Acquisition Trust Commission, SACOM. We're dealing with securities and trust, people. It's called a trust commission. We deal with trust. Trust me. Okay. And that being the case, that's our focus. That's why this is called the mega trust. I dare anybody to come up with a trust that's better and more solidified than this. We have made sure of, well, we also have the clause, if anything in here is fine to be blah, 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 then it doesn't invalidate any other blah, 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 blah. Okay. Our job is to protect your interests. The only thing you have to do when you get the trust 
Just fill in all the spots with red, but you are going to have to go over the whole document. Okay, it really is that simple. You will have to go over the whole document. Why? Because you need to know what's in it. You'll have all the aspects and elements. Oh, not to mention you'll have your own corporation to come with it. The trust itself will be a corporation. We'll, we'll talk about all of that information when the time comes for us to roll out that program. Oh, and by the way, we're going to start our investment in properties as an organization pretty soon and placing tiny homes on properties, and then we're going to start getting into that as a company. And that's going to be a regular business for us throughout the world, actually, because SACOM is international, ladies and gentlemen. We have people in the Dominican Republic, and we have people in other places around this wonderful world who are there to help and assist SACOM. Yay! And when I say people who work for the organization in other countries, so we are international, ladies and gentlemen. Nevis Kits, um, <laughs> sorry, we we don't do too much talking about Nevis Kits because Nevis Kits is a backwards island, and I'm I'm not joking about that. All islands are backwards. I know, I know. Don't take offense. You're backwards when it comes to the more advanced nations that have all the technology. You do things backwards, you are slow because you don't care. And I'm not talking about the people, I'm talking about the administrative agencies, the government. They are slow, nothing gets done. They are, the reason being is because they're the ones who allow the people to be heavily taxed in all of these countries. All of these countries and they all want money from people. They've all bitten and drank the juice. Don't make no sense, but they that's what they've done. Stupid people they is. And so Nevis Kits is the same. It is stupid. So we decided we don't care about Nevis. We were going to do the same type of agreement that Nevis did. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to do one more. I'm going to let you know one more clause, okay? Like I said, there are too many of them for me to announce, and I'm not going to sit up here and give you all everything because this was only supposed to be a tease. Oh, you're such a tease. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, in Nevis, if you had a trust set up in Nevis, if for anyone to attack the trust, uh-oh. That wasn't supposed to be coming back on, so I apologize. Ladies and gentlemen, if you had a trust in the island of Nevis, for anyone to attack the trust, they would have to pay a judge $25,000 just to take a look at their complaint, their claim. Not to hear their claim, just to take a look at it. And the judge would determine whether or not he would let it go forward. $25,000. And what if the judge says, no, there's no appeal, there's no process, you just lose your $25,000. Well, guess what? <laughs> you better believe we added such a clause. And it's left up to the arbitrator. Ta-da! Now, the other thing, so that there is no issue of self, um, self-dealings self and the circular ownership issue, the Eon Foundation, you hear me doing the videos. Again, that's why I'm doing the videos, because I'm the creator of the trust. Well, how can you create a trust over somebody else's uh, their estate and everything? Of course I can. They gave me power of attorney. Limited power of attorney, though it is, but they gave me limited power of attorney to create this for them. That's the agreement. They can't have the trust unless they give the limited power of attorney for me to operate as the grantor to create the trust. Ta-da! So, that's how we get rid of all of that junk. I told you, people, this is what I do. I can't sit up here and explain everything to you because you can't even go to a lawyer and get him to explain everything to you without paying him a certain huge amount of money for him to explain everything. So just know this. Hours. Hours every day I spend working on this stuff. I've been doing this, working on this thing for eight straight months. Supposed to have had it finished months ago, but uh, 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 I had to make sure it was solidified. 
I had to fill in all the gaps and all of the holes, and that wasn't easy. And when we completed the original trust, I said, nope, not going to use that one. And I started from scratch and just added other clauses in afterwards. And that was the best decision in the world, ladies and gentlemen, making it as unique as it is. Oh, by the way, the micro trust is just not another mega trust, and the mega trust is not another micro trust. These are two separate trusts, although they do have similar clauses. They don't say the exact same thing. So you're going to have to read your trust. Trust me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time. I got to go. It's Saturday evening, and... It's 8.50 in the evening. I got to go lay down. It's been a long, long day, and I had a very, 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 very difficult time going to sleep last night because I'm a thinker, and I was thinking all last night, tossing and turning. Oh, I'm sorry. Got to go. Y'all have a good day. Arriva, dirty.